It says, in the beginning, God. That's Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God created it, and he formed it, and he made it. Uh, and only God uh, can tell you the purpose. He is the author. He is the source of your life. to speak to you this morning about a life of purpose. A life of purpose. When you make your New Year's resolutions, you need to count on living a life of purpose. If you turn with us to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 37. And I know what you're saying. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't go with a life of purpose. Well, let's look at the scriptures. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Well, what is your life of purpose? Maybe you're like some college students. You're saying, What on earth am I here for? Who am I? Where did I come from? What am I supposed to do? What is the meaning of life? You know, there's that cartoon of the guy that's climbing up the mountain and he gets up to the top and he peers over and there's a little guy at a desk and he says, what is the meaning of life? And the guy behind the desk says some idiotic statement to him and has him go look for something uh, below. But you know, what is the meaning of life? What does it mean to live a life of purpose? Well, first, it all begins with God. It all begins with God. Contrary to what the world says, you will not find life's meaning by looking within yourself you will not find the meaning by looking within yourself. You did not create yourself. So there is no way you can tell yourself what you were created for. If you were handed a new invention, you didn't know what it was, you wouldn't know what its purpose was. My mom got a Christmas present. Somebody sent it to her. I watched her open it. She took it out of the box, and she looked at it, and she looked at it. She looked at it this way and that way, and she said, well, let's see, it's a, a hammer, or it's a, hmm. And finally, my brother said, no, Mom, that's one of those things that you put in the door, and it's a handle and it helps you get up out of the car. She said, oh, oh, okay, that's great. You know, and, and, and that's the way we are sometimes. We look at things and we go, what, what is it? 
You know, in a kitchen, you have a refrigerator and a microwave and a stove and all these different things, and you're looking at them, and you're, you're thinking, well, you know, what if the stove one day were to say, I think I'll be a refrigerator? Well, you can't. You weren't created for that. What if the microwave says, well, I'm going to be something else? Well, they can't. They can't get up one morning and say, I think I'll be this. Because they were created with very specific purposes in mind, and they must follow the design and the purpose that the stove could get up and say, I'm going to be a refrigerator. They say, no, I'm sorry. You were created as a stove, and that's what you're going to be. You see, only the creator would know the purpose Only the Creator would know. God is our Creator. It says, in the beginning, God. That's Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God created it, and He formed it, and He made it. uh, And only God uh, can tell you the purpose. He is the author. He is the source of your life. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 says, It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. It's in Christ. It's in Him that tells us who we are, what we're living for, what our purpose is. Isaiah 44 and 2. He says, This is what the Lord who made you who formed you in the womb and will help you. This is what the Lord says. He says, I am your creator. You were in my care before you were ever born, and I designed you. Our purpose and meaning of life will only be found in God. God made you to love you and to express His love to you. Thomas Carlyle said, The man without a purpose in life is like a ship without a rudder. It really is. You thought about that? Like a ship without a rudder. No no real purpose, no real meaning, no significance. Going from one thing to another, always looking. People think they'll find satisfaction and purpose through things. They do. They think, well, I can be this. I can have that. Oh, if I only had a mountain cabin, I would be so happy. That's something else to cut the grass, do the maintenance, do all that stuff. And then you'd say, man, I wish I didn't have this mountain cabin. If I just had a house at the lake, I would be so happy. One guy I knew said, I'm going to retire. I'm buying a house at the lake. I'm going to be fishing I'm going to, in about a year, I saw him back again. I said, hey, how's the house at the lake? He said, I'm putting it up for sale. He said, I got so tired of living up there away from everything, I'm coming back to town. You know, the thing, Satan sells you a lie. He says, having more things will make you happy. More important, more secure. But things will never satisfy the longing in your heart. You are a spiritual being. Ding, ding. You're a spiritual being. You're three in one, spirit, soul, and body. You're a spirit being. You live in a physical world and you can touch it, but you're a spiritual being. And there's something in your spirit that longs to connect with the Creator, that longs to connect with the Source, uh, that longs to connect uh, with the living God. uh, And God designed you and made you, and nothing in this world can ever satisfy. Judy Garland had it all. Beautiful, an actress, a singer, great parts, Heath Ledger 
He was, he had it all. He was handsome, starlet, one of the sexiest men. But he, he lost it. John Bellucci, on and on we could go. Without God, life has no purpose. Without purpose, life has no meaning. And without meaning, life has no significance and no hope. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. A life without purpose has no significance and no hope. The second point is this. You've got to save yourself from this untoward generation. Now, look at this in the King James, verse 40. He says, it's the day of Pentecost. He's preaching the Pentecost message. The church is being born. He, the Holy Spirit has come. What does Peter say? Save yourself from this untoward generation. What is untoward? Don't you love the King James? I do. Amen. I love the, I love the language. I love the language. I love the word untoward. You know what it could be written? Bent, perverse, twisted, aimless, without meaning or purpose, meandering. That's what Peter said. He said, save yourself from this untoward, bent, perverse, twisted generation. The first message was to avoid a life of aimlessness, meandering. The Holy Spirit brings meaning and purpose to your life. The Holy Spirit puts you on the right track. The Holy Spirit gives you wisdom and guidance and direction. He speaks, He says, this is the way, walk ye therein. He puts you back on the right. Why is it, why is it at youth camp? that so many kids who are filled with the Holy Spirit find the calling of God upon their life and they say, I've called into the ministry. I've called into children's ministry. I've called into this kind of ministry because the Holy Spirit brings meaning and purpose and clarity to your life. You are a child of God and God has designed you for a purpose. Purpose keeps you on track. Bring short-term decisions in line with long-range goals. Purpose. Training. Man, with a football team, seems like forever ago. About some years ago. When I was playing football, we were on a strict diet. We worked out. We got up early in the morning. We worked out. It's hard. There were other things kids could eat that we couldn't eat. And we sacrificed. And we sacrificed those things. And we wanted them, but we couldn't have them. Why, Why were we doing that? Why were we? Because we had a purpose. Because we had a goal. Because our goal was to win, to be superior on Friday nights, uh, That's why we were undefeated. That's why we went to the second round of the state playoffs because we had a goal and a purpose in our life to be superior, to be superior. That's what a mother, that's what a mother, think about a mother. She's mopped the floor, she's washed it, and her kid comes running in the door with muddy feet and comes running, man, that mother can explode. Yeah, start screaming and yelling. And I'm not saying you shouldn't reprimand your child. But when that little boy comes running in, that little bitty fella, and he says, Mama, 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 I got a flower I picked for you. This is for you. Is she going to berate him and say, you're going to bed without supper because you messed up this floor? No. What is her purpose? 
Is her real purpose to keep the floor clean? Or is it to raise healthy, happy, well-organized children who can think and feel and love? What is the purpose? What is the purpose that to raise a happy, healthy child? You know, a lot of the kids, they, a lot of the girls, they say, but his hair is so cute. I love to run my fingers through his hair. And, and I just think I love him because his hair is so cute. You know, I'm thinking, hair today, gone tomorrow. It really, it, he could be receding hairline in 10 years. The hair might be gone. Don't be worried about that. Be thinking about what kind of a husband he's going to be. What kind of a father, what kind of a grandfather to the children is he going to be? See, the higher the purpose, the nobler the life. A God-given purpose will cause you to become what God has designed you to be. Now, not all purposes are good. They're not. Dennis Rodman. Anybody remember him? He had a purpose, and I think everything he did was with his purpose. He was going to be the most famous, most flamboyant, most controversial NBA basketball player that had ever been. And he had the tattoos all over him. He had purple hair. He had orange hair. You know, you may not think it's good to kick a photographer that's taking pictures on the side of the court, but if it's your goal to be flamboyant and controversial, it makes sense. It even makes sense to pose in a bridal gown. I mean, everything you can do, he did because it was in keeping with his purpose. But Peter preached that God has a purpose God has a plan for your life. He said, save yourselves from this bent, perverse, tw twisted generation and let God bring meaning and joy let, so that you can reach the destiny that you have. Thirdly, God is a God of purpose. God did not drift into creation. I don't think God was there. One of the angels said, Hey, God, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm not really sure. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. What should come first? Light. Light should come first. Let's go with light. Light. Let there be light. Uh, what's next? Uh, let's see. No, it didn't go that way. Creation was God's plan, His purpose. It was His design. God knew exactly what he was doing. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Uh, and then he went on down the line. Jesus wasn't resurrected. God said, oh no, they've killed him. I I'll resurrect him. No, resurrection was planned from before the foundations of the earth. Before the earth was ever created, God had a plan of redemption for his people. Amen. Jesus said, for this cause was I born, for this cause came I into the world. Jesus is called the lamb slain from before the foundations of the world. In the mind of God, in the heart of God, God had a redemptive plan. The resurrection was God's crowning blow that defeated uh, the forces of darkness. When a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, there comes a sense of calling. There comes a sense of purpose. There comes a clarity from the Holy Spirit that speaks into their heart like a young person at youth camp struggling who feels the touch of God and a moment of clarity comes and he says, I've got a purpose now for my life. Living with purpose helps you see the big picture. It does. Helps you see the big picture. 
Purpose allows you to see beyond the daily struggles. Stay focused on a greater goal. How, what's an example of that? Jesus. It says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He endured the cross. What joy. He was going to be beaten and mocked and ridiculed and it was going to be terrible but Jesus could endure he could endure the beatings he could endure the blood on his forehead he could endure because of the joy that was set before him he saw and you can endure so much if you have a life of purpose if you have a plan if there is something in your heart that calls of destiny you can endure and you can reach to great victory. Fourthly, purpose brings passion. Purpose brings passion to your life. Nothing motivates like purpose. Paul was transformed by his meeting with Jesus Christ. On the road to Damascus, He's riding along and he's knocked off of his horse by a great light. And he hears Jesus say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And Saul is there on the ground and he's bathed in a great light. And he says, Master, what would you have me to do? He heard the voice of Jesus. And Paul had an experience with a risen Christ that changed him forever. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Purpose gave Paul a new perspective. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 through 6. Paul talks. He says, If other men have confidence and think that they trust in the flesh, then I'm more. And he goes on to say, Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, which is his purpose, but it changed. It changed. And Paul said, and I count all of this, a Pharisee of the Pharisee, I count it all as garbage. I count it all as dung. I throw everything that I had, I throw it all away for the purpose of the knowledge of the high calling of Jesus Christ for He has given my life purpose and meaning and significance. That's my purpose. That's the real message of Paul. Paul experienced mission and destiny, something greater than himself, a mission that caused him to persevere through suffering and rejection. Paul, he knew it. He knew he said he had been, well, just name it, he had been beaten up several times. He had been shipwrecked. He had been mocked and ridiculed and, and made fun of. He had been imprisoned without any habeas corpus. You know what he did? He wrote a blues song. <laughs> no, you know what he did in prison? He said, Rejoice! And again I say, rejoice in the Lord, for the Lord has given to me to suffer for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's working out for the furtherance of the gospel. That was Paul's message. Paul said, I have kept the faith. I have run the race. I have finished my course. And now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the righteous judge. He said, I've kept the faith. 
I've not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. I have kept the faith. A life of purpose. Lastly, <coughs> purpose brings hope to life. Even in the midst of the storm, you can have hope. When everything seems to be chaos, confusion, there's strife and discord and everything is going around you, you can have hope. You can have hope. I want to tell you, in closing, a young man had a dream. And he told the dream to his brothers. He told it to his parents. And they didn't like it at all. And finally, their jealousy and their hatred sold him into slavery. They almost killed him, but they sold him into slavery. And he went into slavery, and there he was falsely accused and was put into prison. And he was like, what else is going to happen? I, I did good and yet I'm persecuted for doing good. Does that sound familiar? Paul said, I was preaching the gospel, and they gave me 39 lashes and threw me into the Philippian jail. The young man said, I was doing good, and they falsely accused me. But Joseph remembered the dream. Joseph never let the dream die. Joseph never allowed. He had the dream. He had a destiny. He had a purpose. He had a meaning. And he held on. And he said, my God will bring this to pass. And he held on to the dream. He held on. And God took him from the pit to the palace. God took him in the midst of disappointment. Joseph found hope in a dream and a purpose. The psalmist, when he was so cast down and his men talked of stoning him, he was an outcast. His own men sought to slay him. But then it says David encouraged himself and the Lord and he remembered the Lord and the goodness of God. You see, when everything else is gone, if you have a life of purpose, a life of meaning, a life of significance, you can remember the purpose. You can remember the dream. You can have the hope in God that God will see you through. God will see you through. Praise the Lord.